Hi, and welcome to Item Availability and Dynamics NAV. If you work with items as a purchaser, as a warehouse worker, as a salesperson, and so on, you need to have very efficient and very quick overview of items, of available items now, but also in the future, and which we call item availability. So item availability is always asking ourselves, when should items be available and where they should be available? For example, if a customer wants to purchase some items, you should know when the customer requires the items and also from where you should deliver. So when we look at the basic definition of available inventory, you can see that the available inventory is my quantity on hand. So my physical inventory plus the scheduled receipts minus the gross requirements. Now the inventory is the sum of item increases minus the sum of items decreases. And then for schedule receipts, you typically have purchases, sales returns, production, assembly, and transfers. And then for gross requirements, we're talking about sales, purchase returns, production, assembly, and transfers. This is the basic definition that we use in NAV to calculate available inventory. Now, in order to efficiently receive or retrieve availability of an item, there are a couple of views that we can use. For example, the item availability by event, where the availability is shown based on all the different events that you have, such as a sale, a purchase, transfer, and so on. There's also the item availability by periods, by variance, and by location. And there's the item availability by bill of material, where you have a very efficient overview of the availability of all of your components. Last but not least, we also have the availability by timeline, which is a graphical availability overview that you can use in NAV. I'm currently assigned to the sales order processing role to get access to all of the item availability functionalities. So here in the system to analyze the item availability, let me use London Swivel Chair Blue as the example. So here it is. I would like to mention that here is where you can see the different views that we can use. If I click on item availability by, you can see that you can view it by event period, variant location, bond level, and timeline. I'll start with the availability by location. You would view items by location to view actual and projected availability figures grouped according to location code. In this window, I can see my locations. Also, where do we want the items to be available? And you can also see when. If you look at the green warehouse, you can see how the inventory levels of an item will develop over time according to the location that you select. You can see that my view is by day and my view is by balance at date. This window shows one line for each location. Each line shows the item's availability figures in the following key fields. Gross requirements, which specifies the sum of the total demand for the item. We can see the quantity five is coming from the sales line. But remember, you can also have other requirements like production, assembly, and so on. Schedule receipt specifies the sum of items from replenishment orders. We can see the quantity of 50, which in case is coming from the purchase line, but also you could have other types as well. The planned receipt specifies the sum of items from planned production orders. The projected available balance specifies the calculated available inventory. And the plan order releases specifies the sum of items from replenishment order proposals, which include planned production orders and, and planning or requisition worksheet lines that are calculated according to the starting date in the planning worksheet and production order or the order date in the requisitions. This window helps answer the question, when does the item need to be available? The item availability by event window shows how the inventory level of an item will develop over time according to supply and demand events. So I will focus on the green location. If we take a look at 57, which is our physical stock, you can see that there's a decrease of five. Using this view, you can see for which customer this is. You can go to the, you can also go to the document if you click on show document, the system will automatically open the sales order. This view contains quite a lot of information. You can also see 50 coming in. Here you can see the 12, which will, which will be delivered in October. 
Item availability by period shows how the inventory level of an item will develop over time according to that period you select. So still looking at the London swivel chair, you can see that in October, there's a gross requirement of 12. So the project availability, the available inventory that can be retrieved in different ways besides the item availability by event, location, and period, there's also a variant. If you work with bill of materials, there's a bomb level. And if you would like to see a graphical view, there's item availability by timeline. So besides the views that you have here, if you create sales orders, which is one of the documents where you'll really need to have availability figures at the tip of your fingers. If I were to go to any sales order, and then in the right navigation pane, under sales line details, you can see inventory availability. So if I were to click on this particular product, you can see that there's 17 items available. But if I were to change that to 10, you can see my item availability has now changed to 12. And that concludes item availability and dynamic snap. Thanks for watching.